guys uh, welcome to another video so today I'm going to be showing off uh, some of the progress we've made with uh, Maclu Linux flash edition now we've released uh, the Lindos edition uh, at the end of last month and uh, flash is due in about two weeks time two and a half weeks time uh, it's currently in the final polishing and testing phase so I thought I'd do a little rundown and kind of show you guys where we are and what it's about and what's changed, I guess. So uh, before I start with that, I just want to say thank you to the guys that has have donated to the project. Um, it is much appreciated. You know, uh, phew, situation is dire here in Vietnam uh, in the middle of the coronavirus outbreak. And, so um, the help that we do get from you guys is appreciated. Uh, I just want to say thank you for that. And uh, if you can afford, please keep it coming. I I'm trying to sort of build some sort of cash flow for Makulu going forward. You know, we we've got uh, uh, lots lots of stuff uh, planned this year. Uh, this is the second release going live, a third one a month later. We've got seven more after that, so a total of 10 releases this year. Uh, we've got a very busy schedule. So, yeah, I'd like to sort of get the, the funding going for this project. I'm going to leave a link in the bottom uh, in the description of this video. So if you want to donate, you can just find the link there. Um, that being said, let's quickly dive into... Um, Flash. Now, unlike Lindos, Lindos is uh, targeted more towards the people coming from Windows to Linux or the people that uh, use Linux but have always sort of enjoyed the sort of more Windows look, you know, the themes. Uh, that's where Lindos was aimed at or who Lindos was aimed at. Flash is aimed at more traditional Linux users. It's got the more the, the, the GNOME 2 style XFCE. XFCE layout. So you've got your bottom panel, you've got your menu, and uh, you know you've got your desktop clock and you've got your icons on the desktop. It's got a much more uh, a traditional look and feel about it. Okay, it's also very fast. It's designed for speed. As you can see, um, just on startup, you know I haven't really opened much except the terminal, the menu, and so forth. It's using about 600. And 20 to 650 megs of RAM, which, considering what's under the hood of this uh, uh, distro, it's it's very low RAM usage. So um, <clears throat> you'll also notice that says the bottom panel is transparent, and it looks nice. It's got a very nice look to it. You know, even if you hover the mouse over buttons that can highlight, you'll you'll notice there. Even the transparency carries through even on the buttons if I over I over it over you can see there um, You'll also notice the desktop is very beautiful mouse cursor is pretty icons are pretty You know the clock fits the wallpaper Just everything is just so pretty the menu if I open up the menu You'll notice there's some transparency on the menu around the menu um, similar to match the panel so um, it's it's a very pretty and sort of modern look for XFCE. And uh, Flash, although designed for speed, you know, we also focus a lot on eye candy. I mean, you've got to have a good looking OS in 2020. You know, you, nobody wants to run something that looks like it's out of, you know, 1852. So although this is XFCE, and XFCE is a very old uh, desktop environment it does not mean you can't make it pretty and make it look and feel like something that's new and modern so even the simple themes like uh, putting a uh, you know shading this gray and shading this white and uh, you know sort of making a, a, a rounded highlights the all these little things just make it look modern the, the same as this uh, panel on top it's got a uh, it's a beige with a sort of rounded look with the buttons that sort of bubble up, you know, it, it all looks modern. I mean, if somebody opened this for the first time, they probably wouldn't think this was XFCE. They would probably think this was maybe an older version of Nemo or something, maybe Dolphin or I don't know, but they would definitely not think it was XFCE. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> but it is, as you can see, it's Thunar 1.6.15. So we run this on kernel 5.5.8. So it's right up there with 
the latest kernel, which is great. As you can see, very beautiful. Everything is very stunning. The menu is a whisker menu with a slightly tweaked to make it look, I guess, a little bit like a sort of a KDE feel to it. Um, but it's very snappy, very fast. Uh, the apps are sort of um, the same apps that are in Lindos. We're going to stick to the tried and tested theory. So you'll get a lot of the same apps. Pre There's a couple of apps pre-installed, but nothing over the top, Not nothing bloated. You'll have one browser, one office suite, one document viewer, one audio player, one video player, pretty much one of everything, sort of mostly used apps, so that if you open up a document or you open up a video or you open up a sound clip or something, you know, the system will play it. You don't need to go find software to to uh, actually use it. Um, the big change, I guess, on the bottom panel, other than, you know, this looks very much like our old XFCE did. I try to keep everything as standard as possible. You don't want too many changes. This is targeted towards uh, traditional Linux users, so you don't want to go over the top. Um, so you'll find everything is very, very sort of tra traditional, very straightforward, very simple or simplistic. So you've got your menu, you've got a couple of favorite icons over here, you can always drag from the menu, put more in there. You've got your system icons on the other side with your clock. Uh, then on the other side, you've also got a menu. Now in the past, um, we always used to have dual menus with Flash. We had the traditional menu and then we had the quick type Synapse menu. I've swapped that out for a full screen menu. I find that the Synapse menu is, is it's run its course, it's not as popular as it once was. and you know, you can just search here anyway. So if you're a traditional guy and you like the traditional menu, you can just point your mouse down to the bottom left and open the menu. No big deal. It works very quickly, very easily. Just click done. But if you, maybe the new generation of Linux users, and you prefer the sort of GNOME style full screen menu, instead you can just go to the bottom right. And then you've got a nice menu with a search bar, big buttons, you can scroll it with the mouse wheel. Very easy, very nice, and it's got a, it as well, just like the panel and everything else, has a transparent uh, background, so you can see the desktops through the menu. Very, very, very nice. And unlike uh, the, uh, what's that, uh, Cold Slings launcher that people use for their full screen menus, this one is actually full screen. I think this cold sling, the Slings Cold, whatever, it only goes to the panel, it doesn't actually go full screen. Then it's got some French crap over there and so forth. This one actually does. It goes full screen. So this is a really nice full screen menu that we use. Um, okay, so that's the desktop. The desktop is very simple, very straightforward, very straightforward. The power managers to NAR, we have enabled a lot of custom actions. So you'll get search and scan for viruses and open as folder as root and create some link, create Samba share. You know, open terminal here, open group terminal here, all of that is enabled and set up. So you've got send to and everything set up. So that's nice. Out of the box, everything's just going to work. And it's pretty looking away. So I tell you, for XFCE, this is really pretty looking. I mean, it fits right up there with anything that comes out in 2020. This will not look old. Even the terminal, look at that. It will definitely not look old. Um, we added some custom actions, uh, right-click options on the desktop, just like we did with Lindos, and we will also be adding most of these into core. So you've got a, a wallpaper changer right on the desktop. You can just right-click and you can choose change wallpaper, and that will bring up the wallpapers. Now, I'm not going to run through the wallpapers. There's some really pretty ones here, but I kind of want to keep them a surprise. But you can just right-click, open, and choose a wallpaper, and then close. That's it. So right-click, open. Change wallpaper, select the wallpaper, right click, close, and that's it. That's how quick and easy it is to change the wallpaper. It's the same as you did in Lindos. In Lindos. Now, just like in Lindos, we run a conky clock. This clock will be standard on uh, Flash, Lindos, and Core. Um, but I listen to the users, so you can, uh, obviously, you can right click and desktop clock here. Yeah? The same as change wallpaper. Just with a right click, you can do the same with a clock. But before we get into the clock, I had some people ask, uh, you know, can't you make the clock 24 hours and 12 hours? And, uh, you know, can't you disable the clock? And people were asking me about all of this. So I've redesigned the clock interface. So if you right click on the desktop and you choose desktop clock, you'll now get this nice little GUI. 
it's a little bit different than before before you only had select white select black and that was the two huge pictures and now you've got this nice little GUI here with some options where you can select a black clock or a white clock and obviously on a dark background a white clock would be better and on a dark and a white background a dark clock would be better so we chose a dark background now so let's choose set white clock you see it will change instantly within a second or two and there you go see so your backgrounds are either going to be light or dark you know you can just choose a clock which fits your backgrounds nice and easy simple just right click desktop clock and that's set white or set black that's it now of course uh, <clears throat> the 24 hour format 12 hour format you can also instantly set here I think uh, what's the time now is it uh, no, it's in the morning, so it doesn't matter if I try and change it, it's still going to show 11. But trust me, it works. Uh, if it's 11 at night and you set 24 hours, this will say 2300, and if you set, click set 12 hours, it will say 1100. But it's in the morning now, so it doesn't matter which one I click, it's going to show 1150. Let's just make sure it's on the 24 hour. Disable, enable, just click a button, clock goes away, click it again, clock comes back. Very easy and very simple. I'm going to leave the clock running though. But um, quite easy to uh, enable or disable the clock. So you can disable the clock and then come back again to the system later and just enable it again with the same button. So the days you don't feel like using the clock, you can disable it. If you want it back, you can just click the button again and it's a done deal. So it's really nice and easy and simple. Plain and simple. Just look how quick and simple that is. Anyway, uh, sorry, let's hit... Uh, black clock there we go and change that wallpaper again let's choose uh, let's go find a uh, where is my bear there's the bear hello bear okay so uh pretty out of the box you can change wallpaper quite comfortably and easily you can change the desktop clock just as easily just right click and uh, themes you can also change the themes now you can just right click the desk on the desktop and choose themes and now you'll see you you'll get this little uh, uh, color palette here you see there all these colors 24 of them and you can simply select one anyone so you can sort of go to brown and you'll see that it will change the border will instantly change the desktop icons will change if you look at the GTK theme that's also changed so everything will change brown including the icons okay so everything will change accordingly to match the theme even if you look at the menu button that i highlight everything will be brown if i open up something like a synaptic package manager for example let's just open that you'll see here that everything is shaded sort of a brown color okay so that's nice uh changing again to another color for example let's take purple you notice the icons change to purple the border changes to purple Everything else changes to purple. GTK changes to purple. The border changes to purple over there. The Synaptic Package Manager, everything's purple. So now you've got a whole purple looking desktop theme. So it's very, very nice. Just one click. That's it. Look there. One click. Done. Instantly. It doesn't even take a second. No, I don't even think it takes a full second. Everything just changes. Green, green, green. Just like that. Same with blue. Let's go to find a dark blue. There we go. Blue, blue, everything's blue. Just instantly. So you've got all of these colors. I mean, 24 colors to choose from, including dark. You've got the last three are dark. That's why they've got the, the multicolor. So there you've got the dark blue. And uh, so everything's now is dark. You've got the dark red and uh, dark white and so you've got a nice variety of colors here i mean really just about everything you can almost think of and just a click of a button you can just instantly change and uh, of course you can still go to the advanced team manager so you can go to appearance here uh, well all the themes are in there but you can still go to the window manager sorry and here you can still change the the actual theme here to something else Maybe the Geos theme. And if you look here, all the themes, all the themes will change accordingly. We've put all the borders are universal. They change according to the color of the theme. 
So there are a couple of nice ones that they can play with. Glazy as well. Glazy blue, orange, yellow, another blue, black. Uh, so all the borders here will change accordingly. Okay. So very nice theme manager. Just right click themes and you can just simply change to whatever color you wish. Another thing we've uh, well, it's not really new. Um, we had it in the previous flash as well, but we made sure that it is also available in this flash. Is a uh, compass, so you can just out of the box, you can just enable that, and you've got your 3D effects, really nice looking. As well as you'll notice that the border is semi-transparent, matches the panel and the menu, and so you've got that whole sleek semi-transparent look out of the box. And with the bouncy effects, nice looking buttons, really pretty. And of course, you've got the different uh, desktop environments. You've got the cube, so you can just sort of drag it over to another desktop. You can, you know, control Alt, look inside the cube, turn it with all of the nice flashy effects. Or you could, oops, sorry. You could also, uh, you know, unfold the cube then just drag it along so you got all the nice flashy effects of compass and uh, yeah it's it's nice because it makes xfce look like it's on steroids so a lot of guys might like this the, the, or maybe the older generation won't really care too much for eye candy and if you don't you can simply just oh by the way before i disable it if you look at even the menus kind of look like they they what's it like a layer over the desktop you see that with a nice uh, shadow look at that shadow under the menus even the actual menu itself is sort of semi-transparent you can see the bin through there if you actually open up something and then sort of highlight the menu you'll see that even the menus are semi-transparent so when you actually open up uh, when you enable the 3d compass you know you get a lot of extra transparency also fix this menu. I don't know if people remember the old flash. You used to have a gap here between the menu when you enabled 3D. That has been fixed as well. So anyway, so um, out of the box, Compass works great, the 3D. Just enable it, disable it. It's now disabled again. Everything goes back to normal. Uh, very nice and fast. So, Makulu Linux. Flash Edition, out of the box, fast, stable, beautiful, very, very traditional. It just works. You know, uh, <clears throat> I, I like Lindos. Lindos is nice, and it caters towards a certain uh, a targeted crowd. I like Core. Core is, you know, the next generation of Makulu desktops. But Flash has always been my favorite. It always has. It just always works. It's probably the, what I love about it is that I, you know, it always just works. Whatever you need it to do, it does. It always just works. Not to say the others don't, but, you know, with Lindos, it's cinnamon, so you'll get issues from time to time because it is cinnamon. Uh, core, core is nice, but uh, maybe a little too young for my taste. Uh, I'm not a flashy guy. Um, I do like using it from time to time. I mean, I designed it. But I also designed it towards a certain crowd of people. And uh, yeah, uh, Flash, I'm just I'm one of those traditional guys. So Flash is, is where I feel probably most comfortable. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, this is going to be released in about uh, two weeks' time. Sort of the, uh, uh, we're looking at the last week of March, possibly, somewhere around there. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. I might make a couple of videos between now and then. I'm not sure if I'll get time. I'm so busy uh, with Makulu now, many, many hours a day. Um, I don't know if you guys also noticed this little news feeder. Uh, I've, I've not had much feedback. I get feedback from the, the testers, but not the users. Do you guys actually like this? Because as you can see, uh, you can actually kind of read what's going on. Like, you know, when we send out test builds and when the patch is due and just little bits and pieces of information. It doesn't change often, but it does every few days or once a week or maybe once every two weeks, this will change. 
and I'll update it with any uh, important news. And I thought this, this is quite nice because firstly, uh, it keeps you up to date with what's going on. And secondly, if, if there is something that's very important that we need to relay to people, like a, a really faulty patch that could mess up your system or whatever, I could easily just put it here in a few words, you know, so I could always just send out a little. So this little conky, although I know a lot of people will probably disable it, um, this thing is very handy. And of course, it gives nice information. It's very nice looking. I mean, it gives you your storage, RAM usage, you know, it's got a clock calendar on the desktop shows you're running processes. I mean, what's not to like about it? Anyway, uh, that's it from me for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and Flash is coming to you very soon. I'm pretty sure you're going to like it because, man, this just works. It just works. It feels good. You know, it might look a little traditional, but I tell you what, when you run this, you'll, you'll understand what I mean. It just works. It feels good out of the box. It's comfortable. It's fast. I'm inside a virtual box, by the way. I'm inside VMware, virtual box. There it says VBox client. I'm inside a virtual box. Look at this. It's just instant. No matter what I click, what I do, it's, it just opens up and it's just it's quick. So uh, look, uh, I look forward to releasing this and speaking to you guys soon. And uh, that's it for me, from me for today. And uh, keep those donations coming, guys. We really, really appreciate it. I'm trying to so hard this year to build a cash flow for this uh uh, for us going forward. I have lots of plans. Plans need money. Everything costs money. Nothing's free anymore, you know. Uh, we run VPS servers. They need to be paid. Website needs to be paid. You know, server boxes need to be paid. Everything needs to be paid. So, yeah, nothing's free. Um, unfortunately, the, the world is just, it works on money now. So, we need money. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's it from me. Cheers, guys.